it's not all about the achievement. It's about, okay, you know, I want to see what I'm capable of, but also I want to have as much fun along the way. Making time for joy is what will actually help you ride the wave and understand your ideal client so much more because your ideal client is searching for joy. Hello and welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneurs. I'm super pumped because today we're going to learn some lessons from a billionaire entrepreneur and you might have heard of him. His name is Jimmy Buffett. He just passed away. May God rest his soul. He passed away after battling cancer for about four years and he was surrounded by friends and family when it happened. And I think that's a beautiful way to go out. And now we get to learn the lessons that his life really left us. He was a total entrepreneur, but I like to call it an accidental entrepreneur because he didn't like, you know, decide I want to be an entrepreneur one day. He loved singing and he learned how to monetize his passion even though he wasn't the best singer or the best guitar player on the planet, he wasn't the best, the most skilled person, but he learned how to monetize his passion. And that's what I want to get across to all of you entrepreneurs listening in right now. You know, when you can figure out what you're good at and you play to your strengths instead of playing to your weaknesses, you can really go far. So we're going to talk about the marketing lessons that we can learn from Jimmy Buffett. Number one, I want you to write this down. He really understood his ideal clients and he served them really, really well. So if you know of Margaritaville, okay, you're going to know who his avatar was. Somebody that loved a vacation, loved having a good time, chill, understanding that they loved music and they were always looking for a good time. So he was the same way. He loved a good time. And so he focused his marketing strategy on his ideal client that really played into his strengths. So this is really, really important for you to understand. Okay. As you are building out a business, you want to understand what am I really good at? What am I really, really good at? What do I have that only I can do inside of my business? know what your weaknesses are, be self-aware enough to know, okay, here's what I'm not so good at. And Jimmy would create a team and a support system that filled in for his weaknesses. So he could focus on doing what only Jimmy Buffett could do. So what gets me so excited about this is he, you know, has a couple hit songs. He doesn't have a ton. He has a couple. And he learns that you know, Hey, these people really like, like listening to my music and they're willing to buy t-shirts with the slogans that are inside of my songs. And so he capitalizes on creating t-shirts and he maximizes these t-shirt sales. And then what I love, and this is the second tip that we can learn from Jimmy Buffett is he starts to create momentum in business by writing the wave. Okay. And what the wave means is that, Hey, okay. He sees that his ideal client likes to buy physical products. So they're willing to buy a t-shirt. So then he goes, okay, I'm going to create themed hats. And then he goes on to create some more gadgets and gizmets galore, some beer, some margaritas, some tequila, all the things. He eventually builds an entire empire called the Margaritaville Holdings Company and it's hotels and it's restaurants and it's all these amazing things, okay? By the time he died, he only owned 28% of the Margaritaville Holdings and it was a billion dollar empire. But it started, I want to focus on this, the t-shirt sales. And he saw, oh, well, that's selling really well. Okay, what else can I add on? Started to create the theme tats. So I want you to think about this in your business. What is selling well? right? What do people like to buy from you? Maybe it's a course. Maybe it's a course on, you know, I don't know, that whole 
digital marketing resale rights. I see that's like blowing up right now. Okay. So people like buying stuff to learn about digital marketing. Okay. What else can I add on to help people in this? Is it a physical product? Is it an affiliate partnership with a funnel, you know, with a copywriter, with somebody else, right? And so you got to start thinking like this because what this does is it ultimately, when you ride the wave, it increases the lifetime value of your customer. So when you understand your customer's buying habits, which Jimmy did very well, he served them really well by offering them more and more things. Remember, people love to buy, they just don't like to be sold to. A third thing that we can learn from Jimmy Buffett as an entrepreneur is he was really good at creating a brand that left a visual image in the minds of his loyal followers. So right now, when somebody thinks about your brand, what's the image that comes to mind? What's the feeling that they are feeling? When I think about Jimmy Buffett, you might have a feeling and a visual image. I see a beach. I see a margarita on the beach. And I think about joy. I think about happiness. I feel like, ooh, let's have some fun. Okay. And that's what I think a lot of people think of when they hear Jimmy Buffett's name and his brand, Margaritaville. You need to know what are people thinking when they hear your name? whether you're a personal brand or you have a company that you've built out, what do you want people to feel? And the way that you could really understand those loyal followers that you have, your loyal clients that you have, is you have to get to know them. You've got to spend time with them. And one of the things that Jimmy did was before his concerts, he would go out, before he would get on stage, he would go out and he would hang out with the audience. He dressed like them. He really was able to have a conversation with them. He made people feel like, hey, I'm just like you. I'm, I'm just, I might be a, a millionaire, but I'm just like you right here wearing a Hawaiian shirt, bare feet, and I'm just here to have a good time with you. And that's why his concerts always sold out and his products ended up doing really, really well. So you can get to that level if you understand the people that you're serving. So how are you spending time with your audience right now, with your loyal customers, understanding what's important to them, what they're struggling with, and what they truly want to experience in their life? Got to make time for that. That's called working on your business instead of in your business. And the fourth thing that Jimmy Buffett did really well was he worked with partners. He worked with partners to help him get to where he wanted to go. I talked about this in the beginning, right? He knew what he was good at. He had, you know, the idea, the visions of the things he wanted to create, but he needed people to come alongside him. And specifically he needed big companies to come alongside him. He partnered with Anheuser Bush to produce his beer right? So they created the Margaritaville brewing label called Land Shark Lager. And that's all happened because he partnered with somebody who already had the systems in place. Anheuser, I don't even know how to say it, right? Anheuser-Busch like knew how to do beer. So he goes, okay, let me partner with them. Yes. Did he have to give them profit? Absolutely. But he saved himself so much time rather than going out and trying to figure out how to create beer and run a beer business. He goes, Oh, I'm just going to, you know, maybe give half. I don't know what the exact deal was, but maybe I'm going to give half to these people, but it's, it's way more than what I would be able to do on my own, figuring it out, stumbling around in the dark. And I think a lot of people as entrepreneurs, we think we need to be self-made and that couldn't be further from the truth. You should be looking for strategic partnerships often and early because it saves you time. Okay. And it helps you become profitable a lot quicker because as entrepreneurs, we get passionate and we go, okay, that was cool. I did the beer thing. Now I want to move on to the next thing. What did he do next? Cheeseburger in paradise and Margaritaville restaurants, right? Because that's what happens as entrepreneurs. We get excited. It's like, okay, after I conquered the beer thing, Jimmy goes, I want to conquer the restaurant thing. 
And we need money to do that. And we don't want to be caught up in the weeds of running the first business. We want to have multiple conglomerates that can run on their own with us staying as the visionaries, but other people actually integrating the dreams that are the happening. He also strategically partnered with Wyndham Vacation Ownership to build the first Margaritaville Vacation Club in St. Thomas. And that was in like, I think 2013, I read. So you guys like take clues from good old Jimmy Buffett. He loved people. And this is the next point I want to make. He loved people and he treated the people he was around really well. And your relational capital will take you very far in life if you focus on helping other people get what they want and always making relationships a win-win. How can you do that right now with your brand? Who could you partner with? Who could you pour life into to start to create win-win relationships and you know create success faster? Now, I want to focus on his investments for a second because obviously he invested a lot in himself. He invested in joy and experiences for him and his family. He was married for 46 years and had three children and really enjoyed life. And again, remember, they surrounded him at the end of his life. And that's really how you want to go out. His family loved him. And he got to leave such a huge impact on the world because he had time freedom and he had financial freedom. You can have that same thing because you got to just follow the roadmap, invest in yourself. Okay. Invest in mentorship. And, you know, in Jimmy's case, he didn't go out and hire a coach. Okay. But what he did do was he had an agent, his agent had, you know, gotten percentages and royalties from his songs and from other deals that he hooked him up with. And so you got to be willing to give away some of the pie that you're creating. You know, they have that saying that the hungry hog gets fed and the greedy pig gets slaughtered. And so there's a really fine balance around being greedy and spreading your wealth among strategic partnerships. Jimmy did that really well. So when it came to his investments, remember he invested himself, he invested in his multiple companies to really grow those conglomerates. He also invested in real estate. The complete numbers haven't come out yet, but it said that he has over $140 million in real estate all over the world. Success leaves clues. And what I love about real estate is it's backed by dirt. So the land is always going to be worth something. Even if some of these houses he owns are old, it's still the land means something. And it's when with inflation happening and the economy, we're going, what's happening with it? When you own real estate, it's always going to be worth something. It hedges against inflation. Remember that. So he owned real estate. He also was a very big shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. And Berkshire Hathaway is owned by Warren Buffett. And I never, when I started reading about this, I was like, oh my gosh, are they related? So no, they are not related. Warren Buffett is one of the world's most famous investors. And he's been through the markets, you know, ups and downs all over the place. But Jimmy did have some holdings in Berkshire Hathaway. And so I want to kind of explain to you what Berkshire Hathaway is. It's a holding company. Okay. So what that means, it's a business that holds controlling interests in other companies. So some Berkshire Hathaway has ownership, like full ownership in some businesses, such as Dairy Queen, Geico Insurance, Business Wire, Duracell. Yes, the batteries. But then it also owns like part ownership and shares in other companies. So think railroads, utilities and energy companies, manufacturing, retail companies, and other investment companies. Okay. So I could go on and on, but, uh, here's the thing. Jimmy owned some shares in Berkshire Hathaway. And so what that means for you is diversification. We're hearing he has real estate. He's in Berkshire Hathaway and they are very diversified. Okay. Their top five holdings is with Apple, Bank of America, Chevron, Coca-Cola, and American Express. So what that means is Jimmy owned a piece of the pie in all of those different companies. 
So Apple can have a bad day, but maybe Chevron has a good year and it makes up for it. And so that's really how you're able to get even more diversified is not managing your own finances, but putting it with a trusted advisor such as Warren Buffett, who is, you know, really in it for the long-term game. And that's what I want you to realize about Jimmy Buffett. He focused on long-term. He did not focus on the short-term gratification when it came to investing. Being a part of Berkshire Hathaway is going to have its ups and downs, but he was in it for the long haul and he ended up winning big. Same with your business. You know, it's not every day or every year is a win. Are you in it for the long haul? Jimmy Buffett was. Real estate. You know, he's owned some of those places for decades. Has some of them lost value and gone up and down? Yes, but over time they've increased in value and he gets to leave that for his family. So this is what we want to take away. Focus on our ideal client, understand them really well and invest and diversify, invest early, invest often. And the last thing I want to leave, the thing that gives me so fired up about Jimmy Buffett's life is he had a lot of fun. What's the point of doing all of these things, of becoming a billionaire and not having fun while you're doing it? Like, are we just doing it to say, hey, I'm a millionaire? Hey, I'm a billionaire. That's not why Jimmy did it. He did it for the time freedom, ultimately. And I know that's why I got started was because I wanted more time with my kids. I got more time with my kids and then I realized, oh, I could do a lot more. And I started to challenge and push myself and God started to give me bigger dreams and visions for my family. And then, you know, we've won some and we've failed some. And so that's the type of mindset we want to have is it's not all about the achievement. It's about, okay, you know, I want to see what I'm capable of, but also I want to have as much fun along the way. How am I building in joy into my life? Taking time to spend with the people we love going and doing the experiences, going to the concerts that we've always wanted to go to, making time for joy is what will actually help you ride the wave and understand your ideal client so much more because your ideal client is searching for joy. So if you're living out joy, you really know how to serve it up to them no matter what industry you're in. So that's your challenge is to focus on joy. After you listen to this episode, what are you gonna do to fill up your joy tank? All right. Thank you so much for listening in. 